What I personally love about Jackie Matisse's work is that she uses the languages of early modernism and she puts them in the format of something everybody would enjoy, like a kite. And movement and form is, is exciting. It, it brings art out of the shadows of unintelligibility and returns it to, to some fun. While at the same time, it's, it's a rather serious business, like all art is. Uh, it's really a, a unique development in uh, sculpture. And I, I, I feel like in some ways her work is, is a very successful kind of social sculpture because it can engage the public and the audience in some very direct way. Everybody can identify with this. These are some examples of Jackie Matisse's kite tales. These are the source materials from which we're going to make the virtual reality presentation of her work. It's quite amazing to be in discussion with her while she's making one of these kites and the specific concerns that she has about how these forms may interact and move as they are affected by channeling in the air or in water. It's very elemental and somewhat reminiscent of early modernist work that would have been associated with her grandfather, Henri Matisse. She's been making real pieces all along and becoming involved with the idea of virtual space has, has been challenging for her. To Francis Thompson, the arts management graduate student, who's, this is his thesis work, he's organizing many of the events that will happen during the week of her visit at Virginia Tech and that have to do with the planning and creation of the virtual reality piece. Jackie Ortiz will come down and do a nine-day workshop with the students and I'm going to help her create those kites with uh, the public um, and Virginia Tech students. These source materials will be scanned. They're scanned on a flatbed scanner with a, uh, a mask frame. They're absolutely consistently scanned so the measurements are careful. Then we send these to Tom Coffin at the Supercomputing Center at the Ballstrom Station in Arlington, Virginia. That's sponsored by the University of Illinois. And he takes our scans and conforms them and sends them on to Chicago to Shalini Venkataraman who's a programmer, really a physicist, who will create the code that will allow these to be put into illusionistic movemented space inside the virtual reality cave. Ron Kriz at Virginia Tech pointed out that cave technology began with visual artists at the University of Illinois, and that it was perfectly appropriate that we should undertake a project like this. Uh, well, you have to forgive me, I'm an engineer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although I enjoy art, uh, I was really glad to see that Ray Cass and his group uh, were, were also using it from an art and art history perspective. So, and that's exactly what we want to have happen here at Virginia Tech, that it isn't just visualizing structures that have meaning for a scientist or an engineer, but structures and properties related to those structures that I, I, can imagine would be just as useful to the artist. This is 24-7 access, students and educational projects, there's no charge. I would make an analogy to people, and they look sort of perplexed when I say this, but after they experience it, they understand what I've said. Um, we've looked through a window of a CRT screen so often that there, here's this rich three-dimensional world on the other side of the CRT screen, okay? We can't imagine ourselves getting about this small, walking through the glass of the CRT screen into that world. But the opening to the cave there is a very large opening to the CRT screen. Mm -hmm. And you walk into the cave, into that immersive world. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's like. So if you can imagine yourself getting this small, and walking through your CRT screen into the three-dimensional world and being there, that's what the experience is like. This is one of the few things that is mostly experiential. Uh, you can explain what full immersion is. But until you experience it, it's, it's one of these really difficult things to explain. So you got to go in there.
I think what's exciting to Jackie about the virtual reality project, working in the cave, is that her social sculpture heretofore has been in air, real space, and in water, underwater, and now she's going to be working in virtual space. And I think that's very, very appealing to her. Like this is just the beginning of more collaborations with artists in virtual reality. See, I don't need to act that. That's just scary.